Finally, the day has come that I've been waiting for. The day of departure. But was I ready? Was this whole thing maybe too big for me after all? What if I fail? What if I'm not up to what is waiting for me out there? Little did I know of what was to come. The last thing I would have expected was that it would be my mind working against me again. Just like in the last few years. I learned it the hard way. But before that, the first step had to be taken. The step out of the comfort zone. The step into uncertainty. Leaving this place was not easy. In just a short amount of time, it has grown very close to my heart. Although I was highly motivated, it didn't take long until I reached my physical limits for the first time. Wow. Whew. It's like two hours in. I'm already completely wasted. So exhausted, uh, completely forgot how much this whole stuff weighs. And I completely forgot how hilly Alentejo actually is. First breakdown, I am so exhausted. It is uh, 30 something degrees. The roads are pretty bad. It's all like dirt roads the whole time. There's no wind at all. I'm sweating like a pig. Uh, there's dust everywhere. For some reason I kept pushing and pushing and completely forgot that it gets dark at some point. And with the darkness came a new problem. I needed a place to sleep. I'm still cycling and the sun is about to go down. And uh, I still have no place to sleep. All the land is fenced and there's it's pretty hard to find uh, a spot to pitch your tent but uh, karma everything is gonna be fine still I was in a good mood and decided to sleep in a meadow under the open sky that night. I have done this many times before and I'm used to it. I slept like a rock and with the dawn of a new day I was in good spirits to move on. However, the hills in the Portuguese inland still gave me a hard time, not to mention the heat. After all, I hadn't been on a bike for half a year and I was anything but in shape. And it's like, uh, like this, you know, you come up that hill and you think, yeah, that's it. From now on, it's downhill, but then you see this. Another hill right there. Wow. It is super exhausting. Oh. Oh. Fuck. Day number two. It's very exhausting still. But I'm slowly getting getting into the mode, you know. Um the heat is unbearable uh, during the day and uh, there's not so much shade. <laughs> this tree here is uh, pretty much the only shadow within the next two kilometers. 
Yeah, I'm now roughly uh, 10 kilometers before the Spanish border and I'm already missing Portugal. This place has become like a second home for me in the last six weeks and um, last year. It's, um, I will miss it very much. I will miss all the people. I will miss uh, this beautiful, the beautiful landscape and the culture and the food. Uh, but now I'm on my way. After a while, I arrived at the Spanish border. Getting to a new country always energizes me. It gives me the feeling of having made good progress. That's it. Spanish border. A second night under the open sky followed and I felt good, despite being exhausted. This morning I woke up in a puddle. It seems like uh, this little wall here is not really holding back all the water. I luckily had my uh, footprint of the tents under the sleeping pad, so um, nothing really got wet. It's day number three now and um, I already had breakfast and now I will pack all my stuff and get going. Spain, Andalusia, here we are. In Spain, pretty much everything changed. I really felt that I was in a different place with a different culture. And that's after just over two days on the bike. Every inch of ground here is used for agriculture. There were suddenly no more mountains. The distances between the villages became larger and as far as the eye could see, there were fields. Fields everywhere. I was worried about not finding a place to sleep for the night. But in the evening, I still found a beautiful place to camp. So today was the first day that I felt pretty much all the emotions. I felt so shitty today from being sad, being lonely, being angry, to uh, being super happy, being super with myself, and um, yeah, it's just crazy. I, uh, there were points that I felt like I have to stop this whole thing, I'm never gonna do this. Um, I felt completely lost, and then half a minute later, it's, uh, it's, it completely changes and you're so grateful to be alive and to have the privilege to do this whole thing. Today was just perfect. I just saw on the map that there is a little river and a lake and usually that's a good sign. And I come here and I find this completely deserted camping spot uh, at the beautiful lake. Um, I there is uh, some crazy flower shit going on here. I have no idea what this is. It's like uh, fluffy little white things that fly around everywhere. And uh, it looks just incredible. And there's no one here. There's a uh, few people here and there. And um, nobody else. Some rats. But apart from this, I'm pretty much alone and that's why I also pitched my tent. Tonight I give myself a dry and hopefully very peaceful night. And now I'm just gonna go make some dinner and I even have some beer. That's gonna be awesome.
The next day, the landscape didn't change a bit. I felt more and more lonely. I had the feeling that I was on the moon. On a moon with a lot of agriculture. Spilled some water. I'm here in the middle of nowhere. Ah, oh, but basically I'm fine. At least that's what I tried to tell myself. I didn't want to cycle too much in the first place today, but this landscape doesn't look like it has some great camp spots for me. Everywhere you look, agriculture. Everywhere. Don't feel much like riding today, but yeah, that's it. I was in Sevilla today and uh, these cities always kind of exhaust me very much. You always feel like in the way, especially these contrasts, you know. The world doesn't really seem sane anymore. When you're out here for the whole time and you sleep in nature, at some point you reconnect to what this all is. And then you enter a city and it feels like people go crazy. It always brings me down a little bit. But now I'm here again. In the middle of nowhere. On a shitty road. After a while, I felt that I was slowly reaching my mental limits. I was no longer in the moment. I could only think about moving forward as quickly as possible. What was supposed to be a journey of liberation and spiritual healing became a battle against myself. I slowly fell back into my old patterns. Overachievement at all costs without taking care of myself. So this is me in a room, not in a tent. Why is that? Yesterday I had a breakdown, I would say. I was cycling so much in the last four days and I was so in the zone that I completely forgot about my physiological and psychological needs. I was always hurrying, hurrying. I have to push, push, push and make miles. Why? I have no idea. At least I have no reason. I have an idea why I have these preconceptions about what I have to achieve or rather overachieve. This has been a part of me for a very long time and this whole journey is supposed to be a way to cope with that, to change that. But instead, I completely fell into the trap again. So yesterday I was riding through these wheat fields and there were thousands of there were thousands of thoughts about okay i don't find any camp spot right here because there's just agriculture everywhere i don't have enough water to camp here so i need um i need to get to the next town 
and there were no sh there was no shadow at all, and it was very hot, and no people, and I got into this very strange zone of being under sugar, nearly going crazy, and yeah. Um, then I completely forgot about my body and what I actually need, that I needed rest. And yeah, then I arrived in uh, Fuentes, Fuentes de Andalucía, Fuentes de Andalucía. Um, and I realized there's no way, this is, there is, there's absolutely no way that I will find a camp spot right here. Um, there's absolutely no way I will leave this town. I was so exhausted, I was feeling so lost and then I decided to take or to get a room. And first it felt like I was failing. Um, I have no idea why. Because I think I have to be on a budget the whole time and um, I can't afford to take rooms every now and then, which is complete bullshit. I, I need to do this. I need to feel well. I need to feel good to do this for a long time. Um, and I now realize that. So I'm still here in this room. It's um, 11.30 something. Um, I have to leave in 30 minutes. But I'm still here because from now on I try to do things more slowly. I try to do things more relaxed. I try to listen to my body more. I try to listen to my needs more. This is not... I'm not on a mission to break any world records. I'm... I don't have any mission basically apart from fulfilling my dream, apart from doing this whole thing. But if I do it, like in the last three days, I will be broken in a week. You know, yesterday I was completely lost. I, I felt like quitting for the first time. I didn't really have the self-esteem to believe in myself. And today it's completely changed. And this is what I appreciate so much about a journey like this. Because of the fast rate of change of emotions and thoughts and things that go on in your mind. This helps you really to stay in the moment, to really be aware and appreciate life. And that's what I'm here for. I love this! <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. It's very good to have you on board. I'm very grateful that you're watching this. I'm happy about every comment, about every like and every subscribe. So if you like that video, just hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want would like to support me even further, there's a link in the description. See you next time.